Greetings friends, welcome. Today we're looking at how to make a router in React from Basics. Um, so what I've got here is a very simple app. Just got, uh, I've just got to do in here at the moment. We've got two pages, we've got a home page and page one. And we wanna be able to navigate to these using a SPAR approach um, and using uh, techniques similar to what we see with other routers. So, you know, you could you would want to define the root with a root tag um, and then have a link tag as well. So we'll try and yeah, mimic what, what is out there at the moment and just see how, how straightforward that is actually. You know, if you if I look at the page here, I've just got this to do coming up at the moment from the app. And here's our two pages. We've got page one, just going to return page one here, and home page. So the first thing we would want then is this root object so we can define our roots. Um, so let's create that. Let me get rid of home and page here. We don't need to see them anymore. Uh, and let's create a root object. Um, and we'll just start off with it very basic um, and get it to, to um, show the page. So basically each root object will take um, a path and a component. So let's pass those in. So we'd have a path we'd have a component and we'll um, we'll decide whether we'll basically have all of these defined on the page and only the one that matches the current path will render so within the route we'll say we'll have a check here uh, for what the path is and if it's our current path we'll render ourselves otherwise we'll just return nothing so so what can we do with it we'll, we'll set up um, some state for this. We'll have the current path and the ability to set a current path like so. And we'll set that to a window.location.path name. Um, so that gives us just the end of the um, the URL, so like page one or the, the root, the, the, uh, the forward slash. Um, all right. So what we can do then is is render it if we're on that path. So if the path that we've had pathed in, well, let's say if the current path then is the same as the path that we have been configured with, then let's render this component that's passed in. So. We'll say we can picture. Well, we're going to write it in a second, but but root here we'd pass in path one, and we'd pass in the component. Um, we'd pass in sorry page one, and we'd literally pass in page one itself. Um, and if it's not, we just return null. Um, so if we come into the app here now, what we should be able to do is create a root component specify the path um, so we'll do two we'll do the home and and page one so let's do well, well yes yeah, so if a home we're going to do the home component so the path is the forward slash and the component is home and that's all we would need there and then let's create the other one as well so the path would be page one and the component would be page one as well. Um, so when we're sending these paths in, we're just passing as a string, but the component is the actual object because in our root, we're literally gonna um, return the object to render itself there. Uh, oh yeah, on that note, I need a return there. Um, so depending on the path name, we will get what one of these rendered. One will return null and one will return itself. And we should see that coming up. So if I save that off now and come back in here. So we did have just to do. Now we've got home page because we are on the home. If I navigate to page one, that is working. Um, it's noticing that our... Um, our path name here is page one. And so because of that, um, we've got page one here. We've passed in page one on the path here, which means we're gonna render this component page one here. 
Um, so basically all your pages are defined and then they are rendered depending if they are the current path. Right, so the other thing you'll see on routers then is uh, the link object. So we wanna be able to click on a link to move between these pages. So let's have a look at creating that now as well. Uh, if I do a const a link, and I say, similarly, it's just going to be an object. What's it going to do? This, this is basically going to return an anchor object. The href is going to be where we're going to. And we'll provide that on the link object. Um, so let me put that in here so we can specify that as a prop. Um, like so. And then in our children, in our children here we would specify the link that the the user is going to click on so let's say um literally children here and we can pass that in as well like that and that should mean um that we can click on this now and navigate now this won't give us a spar experience but it will allow us to navigate between them if i create some of these links in here now so we'd have two links we'd have a link and we'd say two and again this would be a string and we'd say two page one and we can say uh navigate to page one and then let's do let me uh, scroll this down a bit then we create another one and we say to um to the home page and we can say navigate home um so as you can see here so this two is the page we're going to go to and when we click on it the href will get set to that and then our children um is just going to get pasted in here so we should see those two links on the page now so there they are navigate to page one and navigate home um i'll just put them inside a list here just so they're on separate lines let's just do it um let's just do that so that don't take up too much space okay so that's a bit nicer so this should work now as well um because clicking on these will change the url and our component will re-render and it will determine whether it's on the, that url or not so clicking on the home takes us to the home page clicking on page one takes us to page one you'll notice here we're getting flashes up so it's doing a full page refresh so it's not a spa type experience which is what we'd like so that's the next thing we can try and add in now and for that we we just need to override the default of what our anchor is doing here so we can do that we can we can put a, a method on here and say prevent default say and then look to create this method uh, it's going to want to take the parameter because the first thing we're going to call is um, prevent default. Right, so that will stop us navigating, but now we need to do it ourselves. Um, what we can do is use window.history.pushdate uh, and we can put the new URL on there. What's... Um, what's our url going to be it's going to be the two value um now there's two parameters in here that are just defaulted so we just put those in but the url parameter on the end there we would specify as two um, and that should get added correctly so now the browser is going to move page but without doing a full page refresh it'll just be up to us to update the dom in the background we still now need our component to um, to re-render. So we want to get get it. We want to we want to get um, this. We want to get this updated basically. So what we'll do is we'll fire an event in the link and handle it in each of the routes. Um, so every route will handle it, um, and again, it can then determine if it needs to um, draw itself or not. Right. So what could what would we do there? Let's do. Um, Let's just create a um, 
location change event and it's going to be a it's going to be a pop which is going to be a new pop state event um, and we'll call it navigate like so and then we'll just fire that one off so dispatch event location change okay it should be all we need in the link um, now we need to handle that in our roots here so let me close that one down again a minute um, now what we can do in here is set up an event handler for each of these roots uh, and use effects can do that for us so once the component's ready we can add that in so let's let's have a use effect in here and in here we want to set up um, that event so we would do um, window dot add event listener and we're listening for the navigate event and we're going to get it to call our local function which we can call navigate as well um, like so so let's let's create that function navigate um, and in here we just want to update our local state to the new um the new url so we would do set current path in here and we would set that to same as before the window dot location dot path name like that um so in our link we will uh i'm just going to to that in our link will stop doing the normal default we'll specifically say right we're now on this url and we'll raise this event which will get handled in each of our root components which will mean this will get reevaluated and determine the new page to display um, that should be i think that should be pretty good let's close those down and come in here so before when we were doing this it was flashing as we navigated but now if i go to the page you'll notice it's pretty solid so it's all happening in the background so more of a spa application there um, one other thing we could have a quick look at here is say i'm on page one now and i want to go back when i press back it updates the url but the page didn't update date um, now that is because we're not firing this event when we do the back button but the browser will fire one for us um, and we would just need to handle that similar to we're handling our one and it's called um, pop state um, so if we get one of those events we also need to update and get us to re-render as well. So now when I come in here, if I go home and then page one and I do the back, now this back from page one updates um, to home page there as well. Um, so there you go. That's the basics of how a router works. There's lots of little edge cases to go from here and lots of more you can do. Obviously, you look at something like Reach Router or React Router DOM or any of the other routers. And there's a lot that they'll do to, to make it work with all the edge cases and be easier to set up and more performant. But the basics of your link and your root are what we've seen here today. Um, okay, there you go. Hope that was interesting. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, thumbs down if not, but catch you next time.